Welcome back guys, I'm CMC Barber, and today I'll be showing you how I create a smooth drop fade. I would normally be facing the camera, but I've chipped my front tooth and <laughs> look like a nutter. So today you've got to deal without my face, which some of you will definitely prefer. Today we've got my boy Charlie in the hot seat. Charlie is going for a great eight on the top with a nice low fade to really bring out the contrast in that shape up. Please, if you like the tutorial, then don't forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. This helps the channel grow just by tapping that button. All right, enough of me waffling on, let's get into the cut. For this tutorial, you're gonna start by assessing the growth patterns and natural behavior of the hair. You'll do this by combing through and looking at the direction of hair growth. It's important to work with the natural flow of the hair as when it comes to an easy to maintain haircut, anything against the natural flow will cause problems for your client. Now that you've assessed the haircut and determined the best way to attack it, you're gonna start by attaching a grade eight and working from front to back against the grain. As you can see, you're working in small sections, each time overlapping your previous section with the clipper. This ensures all hairs are cut and limits the amount of hair that gets missed by the clipper. Once the bulk has been removed, you're gonna use your fine tooth comb and comb the hair back while following along with the clipper. The fine tooth aids the clipper in picking up any stubborn hairs that you'd otherwise miss. Blow away the excess hair. This is for the client's comfort and it's always better to work with a clean canvas. As always, you're gonna place your comb flat against the side of the head and find where the head starts to naturally curve. This is known as the parietal ridge. The ridge is our most important guard in the head and will dictate our final shape. Here, we're gonna go for a slightly squarer shape following Charlie's natural jawline. You're now about to prime the haircut. Here, we're descending down from a grade eight, getting the sides primed, ready to start fading. Attach a grade three or nine millimeter and using a fixed vertical cutting line, place your guard in just below the parietal ridge and scoop up directly so you don't press into the curvature of the head. This will create some weight on the corner of the shape, allowing you to influence a square silhouette. Below the grade three, you're gonna attach a grade two or six millimeter, open the fade lever all the way and begin fading into the previous section. You'll then close the lever and repeat the same process. Take your clipper with a closed lever and no guard and start setting your guides. You'll create a finger's width guide at the 10 point behind the ear. Following this, you'll arch around the ear, connect those two guides and move on to your back section. Find where the occipital bone is prominent and place your third zero guide around three fingers width below. Finally, connect your third guide to your previously set guide behind the ear Remove the bulk and clean up underneath with your trimmers, making sure not to overlap your zero. Repeat this process for the other side. Now you're starting your fade process, you're working two halves of the head. Take your clipper with an open lever and create a guide at one finger's depth above your zero. Follow this guide around to the back of the head and as you reach the temple area you're going to stop just before you reach the contours. This is to allow some contrast when it comes to shaping up the edges which is what gives that drop fade that distinctive pop. Close your fade lever by two clicks or halfway closed and start working the line out from underneath your previous section. You'll wanna make sure you're going in opposing directions and using the corners of your blade. This will allow you to remove any stubborn hairs. Close your lever all the way closed and notch it back by a little bit and repeat the same process. If you find there's still a line, close your lever fully and gradually fade just on the line. Take your grade one or three millimeter, open your fade lever halfway and again work in one finger's width above your previous guide. Close your lever and work just under your previous section. Take 
attach your half guard or two millimeter and start bumping out your bottom line. Work your fade lever open and close to remove any dark blemishes before moving on to your bare blade. If you're still seeing a faint line, then remove your guard with an open lever and knock the last line out. You may find that you need to close your lever halfway or fully closed to bump out some patches of dark. Moving on to your 1.5 guard or 4mm, open your fade lever and start scooping out into the top of your fade. As you get towards the bottom line, adjust your lever closed and start bumping out the remaining line. This is where you'll get creative. You'll use a mixture of guards and your fade lever to refine and get the fade as smooth as possible. This is down to the individual and every head shape is different. You can use the same method with every fade, but to get the fade looking consistent and smooth is down to your eye. Take your foils and clean up underneath your trimmers. When using your foils, remember that you're not necessarily using these to get the skin as bald as possible. You're using your foils to make the fade aesthetically pleasing. Flick your foils on the bottom of your fade to make it pop. You don't need to go crazy unless someone specifically asks if you can make it as bald as you can. Using your texturizing scissors over comb, gradually reduce the weight and dark patches of hair by combing through with a fine tooth comb and removing any weight. I like to use my scissors in a vertical chipping method to remove any blemishes in the fade. This works the same as a regular scissor, I just prefer the softness of the texturizing scissor. So that's your fade process complete and you're moving on to your shape up. Start by stenciling a light guide vertically at the sideburn and horizontally at the temple. Connect the pair by pulling the skin down and using your finger as a pivot, rotate around your finger, creating an arch. Repeat this process for the other side. Start your shape up at the center of the forehead and work your way back to either side of the recession. Step back, assess your lines, and then make any adjustments necessary. If you tilt your client's head in the mirror, this will give you a clear insight as to how straight your shape up is. When shaping up the front of the hairline, I would recommend sketching a light line first. I normally start by removing minimal hair and working my way back to get a more solid line. If you start too far back, you have to roll with it, whereas if you're careful, you get a bit more room for error. To finish, go through your haircut thoroughly, making sure you've taken a step back and assessed it from a distance. Grab your straight razor and sharpen the edges. Take this time to clean up the beard and leave your signature on the haircut. So that's it guys, this week's video has been short but sweet. Make sure you let me know what you wanna see next by leaving a comment below, hit the thumbs up and click that subscribe button. See you next week.